I gotta say, I'm impressed that Hallmark managed to release a movie in theaters. Perhaps it is due to Disney having reported over $3 billion in losses, or just the relatively unknown people behind this project probably costing less to hire than a Vietnamese prostitute. Regardless, the invitation attempts to draw you in on a promise of mystery and intrigue, with all the effort of a sloth crossing the road. You see, Evie is a starving artist in New York who wants more than anything to be a part of a family. Not have kids of her own, of course, who would ever want that, but be a part of something already established. She's so desperate, in fact, she sends her saliva into the internet, and one jump cut later, a previously unknown family member, a cousin, pops up with all the eagerness of a squirrel in the nuts aisle of a food store to convince her to travel to New Carfax Abbey. And Evie says yes to this man she just met on the internet, and after arriving, she is taken back by everything. She comes to favor some of the maids and gets to both know and cozy up to the owner of the establishment, Walter. Everything is not as it seems, though, as the maids start disappearing like teenage camp counselors in the 80s, because as the trailer ruined, Walter and his brides are vampires. You really dropped the ball on that one, Hollywood. This is a movie that would have benefited from a trailer that was less revealing than lingerie. It racks my brain that this is still a common practice in the film industry today. Not like this hasn't been a problem before. Movies like From Dust Till Dawn would have had that little extra kick if you went in knowing nothing of the genre splicing halfway points. Maybe I'm being a little facetious, though. The trailer doesn't reveal 100% of the movie. That'd be ridiculous. It reveals 90%. And that one little hint I dropped earlier should confirm your suspicions? Yeah, this isn't just a big-budget Hallmark vampire movie, it is also awful Dracula fanfiction. Now, admittedly, this wouldn't be a bad reveal if the movie didn't drop more hints than an anime protagonist's love interest, but it isn't necessary either. In fact, I argue that this inclusion sucks nearly all the dread from the film. Evie is the destined third bride, don't ask, and this gives her plot armor thicker than plated mithril. So when the horror scenes do come into play, and they are decently shot, by the way, the goodwill is already gone, because you know the maids all of whom are numbered, are led down dark pathways of doom, each of which may as well have asked for their last will and testaments as entry fees. This is part of the reason these vampires are inconsistent. Most of the movie, they're shown to move super fast, like Damon Salvatore running away from his problems. Or, of course, super strength, and apparently teleportation, but none of these characteristics play a part in the movie beyond the few moments the maids get turned into a Capri Sun, and the final fight devolves into slapboxing with attacks telegraphed a mile away like a video game boss because despite her lack of experience, Evie can just use her powers to the fullest, or the other vampires forgot how to, I'm not quite sure. So the action, rules, and horror are as effective as deflecting a cannonball with your teeth, so what about the characters in writing? Well, Evie isn't an unlikable character, and I do appreciate her willingness to stand up for herself and others until the script made her stay in place despite all things going on, as well as her intelligence dropping off like she was huffing glue. She's traveled all the way to New Carfax Abbey in England, for a wedding, and never once did she bother to ask where the bride is? Nah, whatever, Evie just ignores that while Walt courts her in front of everyone and she loses all sense of agency. On top of its predictability, with a naive protagonist, inconsistent rules, a rushed conclusion, if you can even call it that, and the final nail in the coffin, it's more boring than English class learning Macbeth. Too bad this movie was released around the same time, but not long after Bullet Train, because that film did all the action, characters, fun, and intrigue far better than this sleep medication. And you can hear my thoughts on Bullet Train at the link above. Also, please, subscribe to join my kingdom.